When I got back from B school though, I didn't know what the thing was gonna be. But I did know, I did not wanna jump into a, um, into a job. And, and I actually tell a lot of entrepreneurs this, that there was a two year period between when I got back from getting my MBA to when I got, let's say, in the game, which, which meant like I got into this accelerator, this, um, this accelerator called Five. We're going to get to that. Right. And where that two year period, I'm actually the most proud of. Why is it? Because, <clears throat> because that was probably the, the most mentally hard space to be in. So um, I'm 28, 29 years old, 30, you know, about to be 30, graduate from, I have an MBA, I speak Chinese. My, co my classmates are going and they're taking like six figure jobs at like, you know, consulting firms and, and shit like that. And I had the decision like, okay, I know I want to start a business, but if I go get a job right now, it's just going to suck my brain juice out. Like it'll suck my life force out and I won't have time to explore, experiment and, and, and figure the angles out to get something going. And so I chose to instead move back into my mom's house. I got a job valeting cars at night. And then I just worked on trying to figure out the game during the day. What and so now I'm, I'm like 30 and I'm moving to my mom's house and I got an MBA and my classmates are laughing at me. And, and my mom is even looking at me like, yo, what are you, what's, what you, what you doing? You know, she's looking at me. Everyone's kind of looking at me crazy. Um, and I just, I just stayed on it. And I just got into a zone where like, I didn't care what anybody else thought. And if I had to be, you know, humiliated for two years in, you know, in, um, you know, in pursuit of something that I knew I could do, then I would just, I would eat that. And um, no, can we, can we take a second here? Because there's an entrepreneur right now. There's somebody out there right now that wants to excel. Somebody wants to go to the next level in their life. But you just touched on such an incredible gem. Something that I always preach on. Sometimes you have to humble yourself. Yeah. And you have to take what by outward appearances would seem like a step back. Yeah. But in that yeah. step back, it allows you to figure out your plan so that you can take this giant leap forward. But yeah. it does require humility. And it does require blocking out all of that noise and getting out of your own head. Because like you said, you're an MBA now. Yeah. Your friends, they're going and they're getting six-figure jobs. Here yeah. you are, a person yeah. who has made six figures. Yeah, yeah. Move back in your mom's house. She's yeah. looking at you like you're nuts. Everybody yeah. you went to school is looking at you like you're nuts. You're valeting cars. Yeah, yeah. But I love the fact that you are being so upfront and honest about the process because sometimes it just takes, let me dumb it all the way down, clear up yeah. some brain real estate and figure it out. Yeah. So I'm and, glad and you I, and talk I, about that. And I make that point because, and I, and I make a point of saying like, I'm, I'm really the most proud of those two years because that's where I see a lot of people get stuck. That's where I see a lot of people make that left turn instead of going right. And they had a dream or they had a thing and they just couldn't take the external pressure, the expectations, the narratives, their friends, their family. They can't, they couldn't take that. And they went, and then they went left. And but I, through that process, I learned so much about, about the game just from that one, 
from those two years of going through that and then seeing the, the breakthrough on the other side, I've, I felt invincible. I felt invincible. Like, once you break free of thinking about what other people think, mm-hmm. you become, you're invincible. Like, that is the thing that drags, like, 90% of the people down. You know, and like people are not, people are not really afraid to fail. People are afraid to be seen failing. Please say that one more time. Yeah, people are not afraid to fail. They're afraid to be seen failing. So true, so powerful. And that's that 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 outside influence is so powerful, and people need to. You know, people need to acknowledge that that influence is affecting their decision making. Like every time you think about I should do this or I'm going to do that, there's a thought that goes through your head about one of your friends or somebody in your family and like what they would think or what they would say about that. That is all external chitter chatter that doesn't have anything to do with you. And it's only going to pull you back. So, um Anyway, yeah, that's so I love that. Yeah. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love.